Now that I've got a halter on her, you know, I might want to go and groom her and, you know, some folks, they might want to tie their horses, but I'm going to show you some situations that I might uh, first introduce my horse to my new environment. And on the catching, I want you to know, that by all means, you know, she was sitting there eating hay, uh, she was minding her own business. I probably had a high percentage of just approaching her and have her look at me with a mouthful of hay, and I could have halted her. So I just want to let you know that I, when I approach a horse, I want them to acknowledge me and check me out even if they are eating hay. So maybe the next time when I walk in with this horse and she is eating hay, uh, she might walk up and, and acknowledge me. And what I like to do is if I don't know if my horse can tie well, even though I might have been told my horse ties well, I check out all the horses like this so I get an idea of my horse's patience and my horse's commitment. Now, with tying or preparing to tie, what I like to do is I like to have something pretty solid. That's pretty solid. And I'm going to wrap. I'm going to go underneath the pipe with the lead rope. I go under, and I go under three times. The reason I go three times is because if the horse needed to get away, she can. But there's also enough friction here that might cause her to stay if she chooses to leave. I try to get that lead rope, the tail, out of the way so she can't go and step on it. And I look at the distance. I make sure I've got what I like to do is about an arm's length or maybe a little bit shorter so that she can't get uh, tangled up. And what I try to do, once I get to know my horse, I try to walk back here, let her change some eyes so she goes from the left eye and so she, now she can see me in the right eye. You know, I want to be aware that I'm not necessarily in the area that I could get kicked. But I'm back here far enough that I can go from her right eye I might change here to the left eye. So she, I want her to keep checking in with me. Even though she's tied, what I'm trying to evaluate is what she might do when she runs into the end of the lead rope. Because some horses, like what I just got done doing about teaching a horse how to catch me, she might try really hard to turn and face and come to me. And then she might run into that halter because it's, uh, it's around the fence. But for right now, I just want to check out how well, how patient she is. If my horse is really impatient, they might start pawing. Uh, they might nick her out to other horses. But overall, you know, looking at her demeanor, you know, her feet are quiet. She's still trying to get a blade of, of hay. Uh, but overall, she's not really testing the lead rope. And I, and I want you to know that this video is not a training video. This video is just to give you an idea of some things to check out. If you're looking for some problem solving uh, tips and some scenarios. Uh, we sell those types of videos and or you can go to anybody that you desire. But for right now, that's how I introduce a horse uh, to my environment of time. I just make sure and I might get to where I might go do some chores. I might walk away from a while to see if that horse loses connection with me to see what that horse's tendencies are. You know, she's doing a good job of keeping her eyes on me. She just went through a small scenario of catching me. So you know, for right now, there's a little motion in her feet. Halter brought her back. So there's a little bit of pawing. So because my distance increased, you know, she got a little less connected. So, but overall, I mean, there's horses just over the way. She's not calling out to them. She's pretty content. I would feel pretty good about leaving her here for a little while. Like if I had to go grab a, a bag of potato chips and come back or you know, if I had to go check on another horse, I would feel confident this horse would be here. But also notice that whenever I have her wrapped, it's inside a corral. So if she did get loose, she would just return to her normal environment. But overall, she doesn't look too perplexed, too worried about things. I do want my horse to know that whenever I approach them, if they are tied, let's say, let's say she's sitting over, let's say she's sitting at the end of her lead rope. I don't necessarily want to approach my horse because that could send her back and she might sit back. Whenever I approach a horse tied, I like to go to the lead rope and I'll ask her to step to me. So that, that'll just help out you know, future situations. So again, I wrap so that my horse can show me their tendencies without committing to being tied. So you saw me wrap this horse and I go underneath because if my hand right here is the horse, and I've got these wraps on. If this horse were to look over the fence 
and see what's going on, it doesn't really feed any more rope into my wraps. Meaning, if it were to feed rope, my horse would be snug up against the pipe and could run into some danger. If you put your lead rope over the fence, see I've still got three wraps. Now this is my horse's head. If my horse goes over there, see how there's now slack? And the more often that my horse goes, eventually that might take a little bit of slack to where that horse is snug. So it is less likely to happen if you start by going underneath. See how I take the lead rope underneath? That way when my horse's head goes over, it's got a little bit of friction underneath there to prevent any slippage. So that's why I choose to go underneath the pipe instead of over the pipe. So I'm going to show you a knot that I like to use if it's my first introduction for a horse being tied. Uh, what I like to think about is from my hand to the horse's head, that's the lead rope. From my hand to the end of the rope, it's called the tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the tail in half and I'm going to go under. And it's going to split the tail and the lead rope. I take the tail over the loop, then I take the tail under the lead rope and I fold it in half and I push it through the original loop. Now I pull the lead rope part. Now what that's going to do is, is that horse is now tied solid. So that will not slide, that will not give. And what I mean by not sliding, it, it won't venture down the end of the rail. However, what it does allow you to do is it allows you to pull and quickly release your horse if your horse gets hung up in something. So I want you to, to know with this quick release knot, so again, I'll, horse is on my right side, tail is off to my left. I fold that, put it under, and I split, take the tail over, then under, and I fold. I want you to be very careful about not sticking your fingers through there, because if this horse did pull back, I could lose one of my fingers. So I'm very adamant about pushing rope through. So see, I'm gonna push it through, then I'm gonna catch it. So when you run into that spot right there, if you leave it loose, that horse going back and forth, it'll come undone. So to tighten it, I'm gonna pull on the horse side, which is the lead rope, and that's going to snug that knot right on down. And now she's tied solid. She, outside of her pulling on that tail, that knot's going to stay there. So I like it because from any side of the fence, let's say I was on the outside of the fence and somebody saw your horse in trouble or the horse is tied in trouble, again, they could just pull and the horse was loose. The length of lead rope between the item that you choose to wrap or tie uh, is very important. If it's too low, she could hang a foot over it and you can only imagine what might happen. She hangs a foot, it's pulling her head down as it's tied to the pipe. Uh, some, th some bad things can happen if your horse panics and is not very well prepared. Uh, so what I like to look for, and if again, if I have it too long from this perspective, let's say she couldn't necessarily get her her foot hung in it, what she could do is if she gets close enough, that lead rope might get up around up around her ears. So if she were to put her head down maybe to get a fly, you see how that could happen? And then what's happening is that lead rope is pulling on the back of her head, and as she's tied to something fixed, you can see what kind of trouble the horse might get into. So that's another reason why I try to wrap because if this horse was wrapped and she were to panic, that would come undone. So a good gauge, what I like to do, is whenever I tie or, tie or wrap a horse, I look for that lead rope. Like I said, about a, I mean, I got pretty long arms, but I want to see about a forearm, you know, about a foot, foot and a half is what I'm looking at, what I'll call it. You know, short enough to where the horse is not going to get hung up on, but also long enough to where the horse can, you know, maybe walk for a little bit. She can tip her nose. She's not just snubbed up to the fence. See how she can move her feet 180 degrees? 
and it gives her a chance to run into the rope instead of that rope always being slack. And where it is the most slack, it's right there next to the wraps. So that's a good gauge. And another thing what I like to do is before I leave my horse, I like to see the length of lead rope and the length of tail that I allowed so that if I come back and it's moved that much, I know she's pulled. If I know that it's been snubbed up, I know my surface was didn't have enough grip, meaning it was very slippery. So then maybe uh, three wraps might not be enough. So I also want to test the friction on the pipe, but I really want to gauge and see, okay, that's the length of lead rope I left you at. And when I return, I want to see how much it moved, lengthened or shortened.